Hello and welcome. In the previous session in the uh, D, uh, DBMS uh, course, we have been uh, looking into uh, managing uh, XML data. As we had mentioned earlier, uh, XML uh, is um, a kind of a markup language which is uh, 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 which is in some way uh, the, the de facto standard for information interchange over the uh, internet. And uh, the, the, uh, the uh, power of XML comes from its simplicity in the sense that uh, it is a, uh, uh, a markup language which, where, which can be uh, read and understood by both uh, uh, humans as well as uh, machines and uh, uh, it is independent of any operating platform or in, uh, independent of any, uh, 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 any standards like uh, uh, how schema is described and so on and uh, uh, essentially it is a self describing. Uh, uh, it, it, it describes a self describing data set in, in a sense okay now uh, uh, in this session let us uh, 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 let us continue with xml with uh, by looking into uh, some uh, <coughs> some advanced aspects of uh, uh, how xml data are stored or uh, how they are queried and uh, and so on and uh, xml as i had mentioned in the previous uh, uh, session uh, it has uh, elicited uh, a wide uh, area of interest and uh, there are several different uh, uh, not just in computer science in the sense that XML has elicited interest uh, across several different disciplines because information interchange or uh, uh, managing uh, different facets of information, different uh, uh, points of information and integrating them, interchanging information is a, uh, uh, is a common problem uh, in several different domains. And there are uh, different kinds of uh, uh, there are different kinds of uh, standards uh, in specific domains like banking or finance or bioinformatics or uh, 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 transportation or uh, whatever and uh, several different uh, domains which have defined uh, XML DTDs uh, which uh, pertaining to their uh, uh, specific uh, area of concern. So, so let us uh, uh, look uh, uh, into XML a, a little more uh, deeply in this uh, uh, session and see what we can do with uh, XML. Uh, first of all, let me start by uh, acknowledging that uh, uh, some of the material in these slides uh, have been uh, uh, de derived from uh, an invited talk by uh, Jayant Haritsa in the, in the VLDB summer school uh, held in Bangalore uh, in, in June 2004. Um, <coughs> Uh, so, so let us uh, uh, have a brief recap of uh, what uh, uh, whatever we studied about XML and uh, uh, and uh, uh, what are its main features. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, XML is a platform independent and standardized extensible markup language. Now, uh, each of these uh, different terms mean a very specific thing. Platform independent in the uh, 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 means that uh, you just store XML in plain vanilla text character data essentially and uh, 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 it, uh, every platform uh, uh, no matter what, what you use, w uh, what platform you use would support textual data uh, uh, regardless of whatever uh, underlying uh, uh, encoding that, that you are using. And uh, uh, it is a standardized markup language in, in the sense that there are specific rules uh, that, that, uh, that specify how an XML uh, data set should look like. For example, it should uh, look like uh, uh, it should be a rooted tree and uh, 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 a begin tag should end with an end tag and there is this notion of well formedness and validness and so on. And uh, it is an extensible markup language. The markup language does not define what are the kinds of tags that, that you need to have in your XML data. You can define your own tags uh, uh, and we, we took up some example where, examples where uh, uh, 
uh, a notice was was a kind of tag notice and slash notice or from and to and, and so on. So, it is a self describing data set uh, in the sense that the structure of the data uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is implicit in the data set itself or metadata is embedded uh, 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 within the data set itself. So, you do not need a uh, uh, you do not need a separate descriptor uh, for how the data is uh, 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 how the data ought to be described. Of course, uh, you, you may have a separate set of uh, uh, what might call as uh, uh, restrictions or uh, uh, which, which specify whether that description is valid or not. And it is a very simple standard for data interchange and uh, 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 made up of uh, uh, simple uh, 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 simple building blocks like elements and attributes and nesting of different elements and so on. Uh, and uh, we also saw the difference uh, between uh, what is a well formed XML uh, fragment and what is a valid XML fragment. A well formed XML uh, fragment essentially conforms to the XML structural requirements of, uh, I mean structural requirements of an XML uh, uh, document in the sense that uh, it is uh, it is a rooted tree and uh, it is uh, the, the nesting is proper every begin uh, tag is closed by an end tag and tag names uh, do not have spaces in them and uh, they, they do not begin with a special character and uh, uh, and so on and so forth and uh, 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 but uh, a valid xml data uh, has to be well formed of course that is uh, 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 unless uh, uh, data set is well formed it cannot be valid however valid is more stringent in the sense that it is not uh, sufficient for a uh, for an xml data set to be well formed but also it should conform to uh, a given document type definition a DTD or a XML schema that is a schema that is uh, uh, specified as part of this uh, uh, document. And why uh, XML or what is the uh, significance of XML? Uh, it is a very convenient way uh, probably the most convenient way of exchanging data over the web and uh, uh, like I mentioned before it is easier for both uh, machine understanding and human understanding. So, in the worst case. Uh, you can actually open uh, an XML document in uh, uh, in a text editor like Notepad or Emacs or whatever, and uh, 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 understand what what the XML data is uh, uh, is all about, and make changes if required. And uh, 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 it, it it has a simple uh, tree structure, like a, a simple hierarchical structure, which is easier to uh, understand, uh, easier to enforce, uh, uh, because the tree uh, has very specific uh, constraints and well-known constraints as to what uh, makes up a tree structure. Uh, and uh, 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 enforcement is also easier. That is, it's it's easy to build parsers which. Uh, 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 using stacks or whatever there, there are several kinds of tree algorithms that, that can validate a, a, a given tree and it is also easier to navigate uh, a, a nice uh, uh, directory structure is, is a tree structure and hence uh, 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 XML data sets are usually rendered in the form of a directory structure on, uh, on browsers. And uh, like I mentioned before XML is uh, eliciting interest not just uh, in the computing community, but uh, uh, perhaps more so in uh, several other communities and uh, uh, information interchange uh, is, uh, is not just a problem with uh, uh, database researchers or uh, uh, computer science researchers, but uh, it is a it is a problem uh, in almost any uh, domain of concern. Uh, what is the information interchange problem? Uh, uh, the, uh, simply stated that uh, uh, simply stated it means uh, uh, it, it is a problem of how to integrate the varying or disparate sources of information that exists in any given system. Uh, FPML for example as, as shown in this slide uh, is an XML standard for the finance industry and uh, 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 FPML uh, essentially uh, standardizes the different uh, 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 different kinds of uh, contracts or transaction data sets that, uh, uh, that, that, that are uh, uh, routinely uh, specified generated and specified in the finance uh, domain. Uh, it uh, uh, pertaining to banking or stock trading or uh, uh, loaning and, and several different uh, uh, allied activities where uh, uh, contracts would, would have uh, uh, more or less uh, some common features in the sense that uh, uh, a contract would, would uh, have to specify what are the parties to a given contract, what is the validity period of the contract, when does the contract expire. 
uh, what are the components of a contract and what is the amount involved in this contractual uh, 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 interchange and so on. So and there are several uh, standards that, uh, uh, that, that are used independently from uh, uh, by different sources and FPML uh, in, in effect tries to standardize uh, this, this contractual specification so that uh, uh, it becomes easier to integrate different, uh, 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 different kinds of uh, uh, contracts that, that are generated in different uh, uh, places. Similarly, BioML as shown in the slide is, uh, 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 is an XML standard primarily uh, for use in bioinformatics applications and uh, that too in uh, annotating gene sequence data and uh, <coughs> gene sequences as you know are very long sequences comprising of uh, uh, one of four different characters A, T, G and C uh, sometimes U and, uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, 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 subsequences of this long sequence specify uh, uh, th uh, this long sequence is what is called as the genome sequence and, uh, uh, and subsequences of this uh, 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 genome sequences specify uh, genes or sometimes what are called as uh, uh, some uh, uh, a set of codons which, which code for a particular kind of uh, behavior uh, in, in the organism or, uh, or however when, when, the, when the gene folds. So uh, such kinds of codons or such kinds of uh, 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 codon strings or, or genes are annotated. And this annotation uh, is done in several different ways by several different researchers and because uh, there are several researchers uh, trying to uh, sequence uh, genomes of different uh, kinds uh, and uh, including of course the human genome and, uh, uh, and uh, are, uh, and, uh, are annotating different parts of uh, uh, a genome string. Now uh, BioML is a standard which uh, specifies how these annotations have to be uh, have to be performed and of course it, it allows for free text for annotations that is it does not uh, uh, it does not really place any constraints on what should go into the annotations themselves but uh, it specifies how and where annotations should uh, uh, should happen uh, and uh, uh, bioml uh, in addition to its uh, 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 for example fpml or bioml uh, actually specify the schema uh, they, they basically specify the xml schema of this so the xml schema also supports full text uh, uh, queries for uh, uh, different kinds of sequence matching uh, uh, problems and then the uh, uh, and then a very commonly used uh, uh, standard for uh, a standard that, that uses XML is the SOAP protocol. You might have heard of the SOAP protocol which uh, stands for simple object access protocol uh, which uh, f forms uh, in some sense the building blocks of web services. Uh, uh, SOAP is a uh, mechanism by which uh, a software can access a remote uh, object or invoke or send methods to a, a remote object via the internet. So uh, what does the SOAP uh, protocol do? It is uh, sim uh, simply a message passing or a message sent to a remote object that is wrapped in an XML document. That is the, the message is sent as an XML document and at the uh, other end where the service is provided the XML is parsed and the actual message is taken from, from the XML document and then sent to the object in question. So in this uh, for example you might have some kind of an object that uh, performs uh, uh, a given kind of calculation let us say uh, 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 let us say uh, currency conversion okay. So, uh, so, so you might want to perform some kind of currency conversion uh, and that is a service that, that you provide over the web. Now uh, if this currency conversion object is SOAP compliant then uh, the clients speaking with your object or speaking with your component uh, uh, sends messages in an XML format and uh, the, the object contains uh, an XML parser embedded into it which uh, parses the XML document and uh, 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 divides the XML uh, uh, input into two different parts a, a header and a body. So the, the header uh, contains metadata about the message uh, saying what, uh, what kind of message where is it coming from and uh, uh, any other uh, restrictions and the body uh, uh, contains the actual message itself. So uh, uh, this slide shows a schematic uh, uh, diagram of how uh, an XML, uh, 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 how XML processing would, would probably look like. Uh, uh, given XML document, given an XML document, uh, we have uh, uh, what is called as an XML parser. Now, uh, now an XML parser uh, can uh, 
<coughs> can check for the well formedness of an XML document. So, so that it can parse an XML uh, tree uh, and create some kind of a data structure here uh, uh, also called as an uh, info set uh, which in turn uh, goes into a, a document validator. Document validator uh, uh, essentially uh <coughs> validates a given XML document against an input DTD or an XML schema. So, uh, uh, once the uh, document is validated then the XML is uh, ready for the application of the storage system where uh, whatever it is being used for. And of course, the uh, application itself uh, 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 accepts uh, different kinds of queries using X query or X path and so on and uh, uh, can, uh, <coughs> can answer queries on the uh, uh, info set that it require uh, that it uh, received from the document validator. So, what are the key uh, concepts in, uh, uh, in XML? You have uh, the data model which uh, comprises of elements, attributes and data uh, and a rooted tree structure uh, uh, plus of course, comments and processing instructions and namespace declarations and so on and so forth. Uh, in addition, you have the uh, DTD or the XML schema which specifies the metadata structure and uh, 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 and uh, it, it spe uh, there are several different features that, that are available in uh, uh, in a DTD in the sense that uh, it can uh, uh, it can uh, uh, define regular expressions over uh, XML tags. So, so, you can say that uh, notice can have 0 or more uh, uh, headers or uh, 1 or more uh, 2 uh, elements and so on and so forth. So, here is an ex example uh, XML fragment where uh, this is a rooted tree again uh, it is it is an ex, uh, XML element, but every element uh, every well formed element is a rooted tree in itself. So, this is a rooted tree which begins at IMDB and slash IMDB and of course, uh, uh, you might know that uh, IMDB stands for the internet movie database uh, which is uh, 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 which is a huge source of uh, XML information that is it, sto it stores a lot of uh, movie related information in, uh, in XML. And then uh, IMDB itself contains uh, an element called show and uh, show year equal to 1993 and uh, comments are given like this that is uh, 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 angular braces with, uh, with a exclamation mark followed by two uh, hyphens and then again two hyphens with a uh, uh, angular braces here. So, show is the element from here to uh, here. So, the show element contains one or more reviews. So, uh, review 1 starts from here to here and review 2 starts from here to here uh, and then there is a uh, set of box office numbers uh, and uh, uh, each review itself uh, in turn uh, says where the review is from. Okay. So, so, this one says the review is from Sun Times and the review itself is uh, uh, a mixed XML plus free text that is uh, uh, th there is there is free text going around here uh, 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 within which there is uh, uh, th there are some XML tags that is uh, Roger Ebert is uh, 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 is surrounded by the reviewer tag and uh, two thumbs up is, is given uh, is surrounded by the rating tag. And so, so uh, so, so that is how a simple XML fragment would look like and uh, uh, a typical DTD for this would, would look like this where uh, you start your DTD by a doc type uh, declaration and then specify what is the root uh, uh, element of your XML fragment. Then within this specify each element uh, and the set of attributes. So, uh, IMDB uh, is the root element can contain show star, show star essentially means that 0 or more occurrences of the show element. Similarly, the show element contains title comma review star that is it has to contain exactly one title followed by 0 or more reviews uh, review elements. <coughs> and uh, show can also contain an attribute called year which is uh, uh, character data and uh, title is character data and, and, and so on. So, so I have not completed the uh, uh, DTD as yet, but uh, 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 this, this would what a typical DTD would look like for this uh, XML fragment. In contrast, we have uh, what is called as uh, XML schema, uh, which, uh, 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 which is uh, uh, an emerging standard uh, for uh, uh, which is fast replacing DTDs. Uh, XML schema is uh, far more uh, expressive than a DTD in the sense uh, and uh, it supports, uh, 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 it supports, uh, it is a strongly typed uh, uh, language in the sense that it supports uh, types of, of a particular kind and uh, uh, most importantly 
uh, an XML schema document is an XML document itself that is you can use the same XML parser to parse an XML schema as you would uh, use for parsing an XML document. So how, an, how would an XML schema for this uh, uh, for, for this XML fragment look like? Uh, uh, you see that it starts with uh, uh, an element declaration and uh, uh, the element declaration has a uh, <coughs> uh, has an attribute called name equal to show. So uh, uh, I, I am not starting from the IMDB declaration itself. I am just uh, declaring. Uh, I am just declaring the schema here for the show element. So so this one says the the show element uh, is declared like this. That is the show element is a complex type uh, having a sequence uh, sequence of uh, two or more different uh, 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 elements, where the first element in the sequence is is a title, and the type of this uh, element is uh, string. Right, and uh, this is a single element, so so uh, the element is closed right here, and then the second element is, uh, uh, and and then uh, uh, and then there is a subsequence. So so the first element of uh, of this uh, uh, sequence is uh, is an element of uh, uh, name title, uh, and the second element of the sequence is another sequence. Okay, uh, 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 which which can have uh, which can have repetitions by itself. Okay, so uh, min occurs zero and max occurs unbounded is another name for saying the star declaration in DTD. Right, that is uh, 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 something can occur zero or more times. So what does this sequence contain? This sequence contains uh, uh, an element called review and which is of mixed uh, uh, data that is uh, uh, a review can contain both uh, 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 free text uh, and uh, XML tags in itself. And of course this, this sequence uh, finishes now, uh, so uh, and then uh, and then after this there is a choice uh, uh, element that is the third uh, uh, element of this uh, sequence where I can have a choice between box office or seasons. Uh, and so on. So, so one of these two, I can have either box office or seasons as the uh, third element in this sequence. So, note that uh, uh, show itself comprises of three different elements: title, uh, uh, review star in a sense, and box office or seasons, uh, which was not specified completely in the DTD in the in, in the uh, previous slide. And of course, uh, th this sequence finishes, and uh, th the next is. Uh, 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 the next element, um, uh, the next attribute of, of this uh, element is year, uh, which is optional, so, okay. and slash element. So, so th that is uh, th that is typically what uh, uh, an XML uh, uh, <coughs> schema would look like. Uh, as you can see here, this is a simple uh, XML document in itself, and then you can uh, parse this XML document using any XML parser. Uh, and then uh, based on the outputs of this parser you can enforce uh, the, the uh, uh, enforce the uh, constraints here on the given xml fragment let us now turn to a specific problem that uh, uh, that, that occurs in uh, uh, when, when parsing xml data uh, namely the notion of naming conflicts now consider these two xml fragments here uh, th that are shown uh, the one xml fragment is shown here and the second xml fragment are, uh, is shown here okay the first xml fragment uh, if you have worked with uh, uh, html you might uh, recognize that this is a html fragment and html fragment can also be treated as an xml fragment there's 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 no harm in that right so uh, of course well formed html fragments that is in the sense that uh, uh, every uh, 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 star tag uh, is uh, uh, paired with an end tag and there is a uh, uh, nice uh, hierarchical structure for this fragment. So, so this is a table fragment which begins at uh, table and ends at slash table and uh, uh, there is a table row which begins at tr and slash t, uh, tr and table descriptor that is some, some table cell which begins at td and slash td. Okay. And then somewhere down the line uh, there is uh, another uh, a fragment here which says table slash table and name and width and length and so on and so forth. So, so African coffee table 80 and so on. Now these two could be uh, uh, could occur within a single uh, XML document that is uh, uh, this could actually be some kind of PC data that is passed uh, character data for uh, 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 a given XML element and this could be another XML element by itself. But these two tables are different. 
Now this is required because uh, the, the data contains HTML and, and the HTML has to be rendered and this is required because the semantics require that um, uh, uh, we need to declare something called table and these two tables are different. Now such a conflict is called a naming conflict that is when two or more tags uh, mean different things but uh, have the same name in, in them. So in order to resolve conflicts, when we, how would we resolve conflicts? Uh, one simple way to resolve them is to prefix each of these, uh, each occurrence of this uh, metadata with a particular uh, uh, string. So for example, uh, 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 this one shows a prefix called uh, uh, h where it says, uh, 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 where the, the HTML table is prefixed by uh, 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 a character called h. So, so h table and slash h table and, uh, and use the, note the use of uh, the, this colon character here. So, uh, 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 so, so the HTML table is, uh, 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 is discriminated or, uh, or distinguished from the uh, XML table by using a different uh, prefix called H and similarly the uh, uh, XML table uh, itself is uh, prefixed by F. Okay. Now that is one simple way of doing that but again uh, the, the, the question still remains uh, as to uh, uh, what if the prefix also uh, is the same. I mean if, uh, 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 if, if the uh, name of the tag can be uh, uh, can be identical, the, the prefixes can also be identical when uh, uh, two or more uh, XML documents are uh, brought together the, uh, uh, and, and, uh, 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 and, and meant to be integrated into, into one uh, schema. So for this the notion of namespaces becomes valid okay, or namespaces become, uh, become important. Uh, a namespace essentially defines a unique space uh, uh, globally, worldwide. Uh, uh, across across the web. Okay. So uh, uh, how does it define a unique namespace across the web? Remember the notion of a URL or a, or a URI, Uniform uh, uh, Resource Identifier. A URL or, a, uh, uh, or, the, or the more general form which is the URI is a unique name for a resource across the web. Therefore uh, whenever you see a uh, uh, address like this http colon slash slash osl dot iitb dot ac dot in whatever it is unique that is this stands for uh, it has to map onto a single ip address or a single uh, 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 address across the world wherever uh, 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 wherever in the world that that it is referred to now using the concept of uris uh, we can uh, we can ensure that uh, naming conflicts in, in XML documents can be resolved. For example, we can uh, when we say that uh, uh, when we put a prefix called H, for example, for for this uh, for this uh, uh, table uh, 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 metadata, okay, for this table tag, then we dis uh, we describe that H means a specific URI. Okay. Now this could be uh, this need not actually. Uh, contain anything the, the URI need not contain anything with uh, 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 anything with respect to this table but let us say this is the URI in which uh, we work in let us say uh, where we created the uh, XML uh, fragment. Now once we uh, alias a given prefix to a URI uh, it becomes unique. So in a sense wh whenever the XML uh, parser uh, looks at uh, uh, looks at a prefix called H followed by colon. Okay, it uh, replaces that with this URI. Okay. So if a different H comes from, from a different source and it uh, maps to a different URI, it means that uh, it is a different prefix. Therefore, uh, it's, um, uh, it, it, it basically means uh, uh, some other tag and, and not the same H as uh, uh, this prefix that is, that is specified here. So similarly, uh, we can use a different uh, 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 that is the same URI having a different prefix so that uh, uh, different prefixes from the same URI can, can again be uh, 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 distinguished. Uh, therefore uh, uh, what the XML parser actually does when it encounters a uh, uh, name called F colon is that it replaces F colon by this whole thing slash F. Uh, uh, internally that is uh, http colon slash slash osl triple itb dot ac dot in osl wiki slash f and uh, so so that uh, several different uh, uh, prefixes that have been uh, uh, defined uh, at this uri uh, remains distinguishable so so the namespace attribute uh, 
uh, as we saw uh, in the previous slides is, is, the, uh, is placed in the start tag of an element. So, so for a given element uh, you can uh, for every, uh, uh, every element you can define a separate namespace where uh, names for that elements are uniquely described globally across the world. And the syntax for namespace uh, uh, begins with an XML NS uh, XML namespace uh, uh, declaration uh, followed by a namespace prefix equal to uh, a quoted string following the namespace or quoted string following the URI. And uh, <coughs> yeah, it basically uh, gives a qualified name associated with the namespace. <coughs> so all child elements if, if I define a namespace for a given element like, like uh, in the example table there all children elements of, uh, 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 of, this, uh, 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 of this element are associated with the same namespace. So, so uh, their, their names are uh, uh, termed to mean uh, unique uh, 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 metadata that have been defined in this URI. Uh, the address is just sim simply the, the URI address that is specified is used to simply identify a namespace, but the parser itself does not try to connect to that URI or uh, uh, look up that information or, or whatever. It, 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 uh, it, it is uh, simply used for uh, resolving naming conflicts and uh, it does not necessarily have to uh, check or validate whether the, the, whether the URI exists and whether the URI defines these names or anything of, of that sort. Similarly, uh, let us look at uh, some more issues uh, related to C data. C data if you remember is character data. Uh, character data uh, uh, when, when I define an element as, uh, uh, as, as character data then it means that uh, everything uh, uh, until the slash of that element uh, is taken in without parsing that is the, 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 uh, the, the data itself might contain other tags which are not parsed and everything is taken until the end of that element. So, everything is ignored until the end of this element. And uh, uh, <coughs> uh, but, but then uh, uh, if, if the text or the character text contains a number of these characters let us say less than or ampersand and so on, uh, it is quite easy for uh, XML parsers that, that uh, especially if, if they are uh, little buggy, uh, it, can, it can be quite easy for XML parsers to get confused. and. Um, uh, uh, and look uh, and try to parse them and uh, uh, and especially if it is HTML data and not well formed and it, uh, the, the parser might flag errors even though the XML itself is well formed and uh, uh, and valid and so on. So, uh, there is another way of uh, uh, declaring C data where uh, uh, a C data section can be declared using uh, a specific tag like this. So, uh, uh, this slide shows an example where uh, uh, script and slash script uh, is, is an element that defines C data. And uh, uh, this element, uh, th this element uh, contains a C data section which says C data and then uh, 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 defines, a, uh, uh, defines a function or defines some script here uh, with less than and greater than symbols and ampersand symbols and then uh, ends the C data section like this here. Now, uh, uh, what, what are some of the rules for C data sections? Uh, simply that the body of a C data section cannot contain the string which, which defines the end of C data sections, hence uh, uh, which also implies that nesting of C data sections is not allowed. So, uh, you cannot uh, uh, can't have nested uh, <coughs> like, like you cannot have nested comments in C, you, can't, you cannot have uh, nested uh, uh, C data sections and uh, uh, there should be no spaces or line breaks inside this, uh, this string. Now, let us look into uh, querying XML data and what kinds of query languages are present and, um, uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, 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 what paradigms of query, uh, queries exist. Okay, uh, the, the common querying tasks that, um, uh, th that are uh, usually done over an XML data uh, are something like filtering and selecting, uh, navigation, selection, extraction and, and so on. Uh, in addition, you, you could, you could uh, define some kind of joins or aggregation like, like we do in uh, SQL and uh, 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 transformation that is convert one form of an X SQL data to another. So, uh, before we start up with querying itself, we have to address a <coughs> more fundamental problem 
or fundamental issue of XML parsing itself. And uh, there is one, uh, th there are two specific kinds of uh, uh, XML parsing which, which have implications on how uh, uh, querying is performed. And let us briefly look at uh, uh, these two paradigms of XML parsing and uh, uh, what kinds of impacts they have on, uh, on queries. Uh, <coughs> the first kind of XML parsing is uh, 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 a parser is what is called as a full navigational parser that means uh, uh, of, of which uh, you might have heard of this uh, name called DOM or document object model. Uh, th this, this is an example uh, uh, of, of such a parser which requires an entire XML document to be available uh, for it before it can start parsing. That is the, the XML document should be uh, full, complete and uh, uh, and uh, well formed and so on. Uh, so uh, uh, and uh, which can then be passed and and DOM basically creates uh, some DOM objects uh, which can be uh, called by uh, uh, application programs in order to query the XML data. So the the application requirements uh, state that it should provide full navigational access to the document. So you cannot have partial uh, XML uh, string that is available and ask the DOM parser to start parsing it. And uh, kind of queries that uh, that the DOM allows would is something like uh, like this. That is, uh, uh, DOM essentially creates a, a docu uh, creates an object uh, which contains the XML document, and then you can say uh, something like if document element dot get elements uh, by tag name uh, show uh, then uh, so, so which basically uh, gets a given uh, element of this uh, thing then. Uh, for s in this thing that is uh, s is a uh, element which which is uh, which is the set of all uh, show elements and in the show element if the title contains uh, the fugitive then uh, uh, get the review and, and so on so uh, so so you can uh, address uh, uh, or dereference an element by by the tag name uh, and then it returns an element object to you and then uh, you can uh, uh, get the data uh, associated with that object and so on so uh, this slide here shows how the DOM um, uh, <coughs> uh, parser works. That is, uh, you you give an XML document plus a DTD or XML schema to, to the DOM parser. Uh, the DOM parser performs both parsing and validation, uh, and uh, creates an object uh, or a DOM instance, which uh, 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 which is then given to the application. The application then uh, start calling the DOM instance by. Uh, 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 by using it or integrating it with its uh, uh, with the other set of its objects. The other kind of XML parsing uh, is what is called a string based parsing and uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, example for uh, such a stream based parser is SACS which is uh, 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 which is also widely available on the uh, on the Microsoft Windows uh, platform. Uh, again this is a language independent and programmable uh, uh, programmatic uh, API. Uh, and SACS uh, in contrast to DOM does not require full navigational access to the, the given XML document. Instead, uh, you can stream the XML data uh, and it passes as the XML data passes, uh, uh, passes through it. Uh, that means, you can put an X, uh, uh, you can put a SACS parser uh, on a network stream uh, which, is, uh, which is sending you XML data and as and when the XML data uh, streams through, uh, SACS creates a uh, XML. Uh, 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 object. I mean, it, it creates an object uh, uh, on the fly for the uh, uh, XML data that is passing. Uh, in other words, it also means that SACS performs just one pass over the entire uh, XML uh, stream. And uh, there are several applications where where SACS uh, uh, is more important. Something like uh, uh, stock quotes, which are uh, which are sent in a streaming data. Uh, 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 over the web and as and when codes change uh, data is streamed and uh, an XML parser a uh, SACS like parser can, can pass them and what does uh, 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 what uh, SACS does is it also has uh, uh, a feature of callbacks that is uh, SACS not only parses the XML data but it also uh, creates events uh, that can call back into the application and, and interrupt the application and tell that something has happened. So, so, uh, uh, so, so take appropriate action and so on. On the other hand, in, in DOM, it is the application who is in control and the, and the, the, the DOM just creates a DOM parser just creates, a, um, creates an object and the application decides when to call the object and what to do with the object and so on. Uh, <coughs> 
and of course there is no, uh, in, in SACS it is it's, uh, uh, read only access for, for untyped nodes and there is no uh, uh, in place updating that is uh, that is possible. So this slide shows how uh, uh, a schematic diagram of how the SACS parser works that is uh, uh, you have a XML document plus uh, DTD which is streaming that is which need not be uh, the, the entire uh, document uh, as such. Now uh, the, the streaming XML uh, document uh, passes through a SACS parser and validator uh, which in turn sends SACS events to the application that is the application keeps interrupting uh, uh, SACS parser keeps interrupting the application by uh, sending appropriate signals or events to the application and the application has to perform uh, uh, specific uh, uh, tasks associated with each of these events. So, so it will say that uh, uh, found an element called show and uh, 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 which is valid and this is the element and so on. So uh, uh, as and when a show element comes the application uh, 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 says that oh uh, uh, a new show has, uh, has arrived and this is the data that has to be rendered and so on. And uh, So the, the application begins the SACS, uh, SACS parser but once the application begins it is the SACS parser that is in control which uh, calls back the application. So, uh, uh, let us look at the XML query languages now looking at these two uh, uh, kinds of parsing techniques let us see how, uh, 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 how they can affect uh, uh, queries as well but, uh, uh, but of course before that we should look at uh, uh, different kinds of XML query languages itself and uh, uh, some, some examples are shown in the slide here uh, you have query languages like XPath. Uh, XPath 2.0 which is uh, which is a very commonly used language for uh, specifying uh, uh, navigations or selections or, or extractions from, from an XML tree and uh, it is also used in uh, uh, I, I mentioned the uh, uh, I mentioned the name called XSLT which is uh, 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 which is another kind of uh, uh, query language it is more like a transformation language that is it can convert uh, XML to uh, HTML or it can convert XML to text or, uh, or one form of XML to another form of XML and so on. So if you want to render an, uh, render an XML document you uh, 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 generally use an XSLT uh, query language which will take an XML document and uh, uh, give out a corresponding HTML document in return. Uh, and then there is, there is the X query kind of language which, uh, 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 which is a, uh, uh, what, what may be termed as a uh, uh, composable language in the sense that uh, uh, one X query takes an, uh, takes, uh, an XML uh, document as input and uh, gives out another XML document as output. It is very similar to the uh, relational algebra queries which takes a relation uh, as input and uh, gives a relation as output and it is a strongly typed XML, uh, it is a strongly typed query language and uh, uh, useful for uh, large scale database uh, accesses itself. So uh, let us uh, briefly look at uh, XPath. Uh, uh, XPath is a syntax for uh, defining parts of an XML document and uh, 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 basically the way it defines parts uh, 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 is to use a directory like path structures where, where uh, in order to define uh, XML stands or XML elements. Uh, let us quickly go to uh, an example to, to illustrate this. Uh, uh, this slide essentially says that uh, path expressions in, in XPath look very similar to the directory structure in a computer file system. So, so I, I might have a directory called this slash this and slash this and so on. So uh, 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 if this were to be an XPath expression all this would be elements. So, so some uh, osl.tripleitb.ac.in would be an element and grace would be an element and, and so on. <coughs> So this uh, slide shows an example where uh, an XPath selects uh, a book element okay, which lies under a catalog element uh, where uh, the price attribute of the book element is equal to 10.80 and the catalog element is the root element of this uh, XML document. So, so this is just like the root directory in your, uh, in your simple uh, file system language and uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, the root directory contains uh, defines the element called catalog under the catalog look for an element called book and look for an attribute uh, uh, matching this particular criteria. Similarly there are uh, other uh, uh, examples here. Uh, it's uh, if you have a double slash like this as shown in this example it says that return all titles at any level uh, in the IMDB 
uh, uh, XML document that is the root uh, element is IMDB and title can occur at any level. So, so uh, double slash essentially means uh, 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 any level in, in your uh, document and similarly uh, this one uh, double slash the beginning again says that uh, uh, return a show element at any level okay, uh, and does not matter what, what the root uh, element also is, but where the show uh, year is greater than 2000 that is all shows released after 2000 and uh, you can also have full text operators like text contains uh, result grove and, and so on. So, uh, uh, where uh, uh, anywhere in uh, 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 see here there, there is no element name as well that is given right. So, it just says star. So, uh, any element in this XML document at any level uh, return that element where, where the text contains result grove. So, uh, that is about uh, uh, XPath where uh, it is a uh, it's, uh, uh, the very brief introduction to XPath where uh, 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 which, which is a uh, uh, file system like uh, language for uh, representing different uh, uh, navigational aspects of, of an XML document. And uh, this is where the uh, hierarchy or tree structure of an XML document becomes uh, 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 <coughs> Uh, bec become significant in the sense that uh, it is easy to express a tree structure in the form of a directory structure as, as done in XPath plus it is easy to enforce constraints that is in a tree structure you uh, uh, a node uh, can have uh, uh, at most one parent uh, uh, that is uh, uh, any uh, non root level node will, will have uh, exactly one parent and uh, 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 th there is exactly one path from the root to, to any uh, given uh, uh, element in a XML tree. So, so you can actually specify one uh, long file system like path uh, which, uh, uh, which uniquely identifies each element in the uh, XML document. The next uh, kind of query that, that we are going to look at or query paradigm that we are going to look at is the X query paradigm. Uh, X query is a functional uh, uh, language and it is a strongly typed query language for uh, for querying XML data and uh, uh, X query as I said uh, uh, earlier uh, is an XML to XML uh, converter that is uh, 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 it can uh, it can query an XML document and return an XML document just like the relational algebra uh, queries that, that can query a, a relation and uh, uh, return a relation. And X query in turn can use uh, X path expressions for its queries. The, so, uh, so X path can be uh, can become a part of uh, uh, X query for uh, in, in specifying its uh, 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 query expressions. And uh, uh, it's uh, 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 many people would term uh, X query as uh, uh, as an SQL for XML databases. So, it's it's uh, analogous to SQL in the sense that. Uh, 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 it, it takes an XML document, returns an XML document, it, uh, it contains several different uh, uh, operators, uh, uh, it, it can contain several different uh, 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 sophisticated query operators something like uh, select from where or uh, uh, and, and so on. So, so you, you can actually specify a query like select all papers which have been cited more than 50 times from the collection of papers uh, stored in the XML document called cites here papers and so on. So, uh, uh, you, you can give complex expressions based around a select from where kind of uh, kind of class. So, uh, what are some of the XML uh, X query features? Uh, uh, th there are what are called as uh, 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 flower queries or uh, FLWR queries uh, which uh, uh, which say that uh, which stands for for let where return uh, uh, repeat uh, queries that is uh, uh, it's it's a looping kind of queries where uh, 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 where you can uh, specify a for condition initial condition uh, let where the where is uh, similar to the uh, uh, SQL where and then repeat. So, so you can uh, uh, repeat these uh, queries. We will see an example of this uh, shortly. Uh, then uh, there are SQL like select from where clauses where uh, uh, select so and so from this XML element where uh, this uh, 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 this condition matches. Then there are sort by operators. So, you can sort the uh, uh, elements based on certain attributes. Uh, then XML construction that is transforming one XML document to, to, to another XML document. Uh, you can also have user defined functions where uh, 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 on, on this and, uh, and uh, uh, XML uh, X query basically supports strong typing. So, so, so you can say something like an integer or uh, uh, character or you can perform uh, uh, operations that are specific to integers versus character strings and so on. 
and it also has supports for processing recursive uh, uh, data sets. Now here is an example uh, uh, of an X query, uh, uh, query that is a query written uh, in the X query language. So <coughs> the, the query essentially says that for each actor written box office receipts of films in which they starred in the past 2 years. Okay. So uh, and uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, let, let us go back to uh, let us go first to this last part of the X query document where uh, here you say a lot of let for uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, for let where uh, and and so on and repeat and uh, so so uh, <coughs> uh, but uh, 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 this last one here uh, 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 is what uh, is is going to tell the x query engine what to return okay now here uh, that uh, imdb engine or or the imdb xml uh, document did not contain uh, an element called receipt okay however what it does contain uh, uh, is uh, are elements like box office or actor and so on and what the X, X query uh, uh, language is returning uh, is uh, an XML element called receipts and slash receipts uh, which in turn is made up of uh, uh, actors and totals and so on. So, so receipt is uh, uh, receipt essentially is an XML document comprising of character data which, which tells what is the actor and then one more XML element called total which contains the, the sum of all uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 sum of all box office uh, 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 I mean films per box office uh, uh, receipts that, that, that they have obtained over the past uh, 2 years. And here uh, uh, an X query for example uh, can, uh, uh, can first define variables like uh, using a Pascal like syntax. So, so it says uh, let dollar IMDB equal to this this document so so imdb basically specifies this particular document and then this says for any actor in imdb actor that is actor is another variable Lo note that all variables are prefixed by a uh, by a uh, dollar sign uh, and where actor stands for any actor element at any level in the imdb document so for any actor in this uh, in this thing uh, let films equal to uh, this this uh, this one that is uh, 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 the, the show element where uh, it contains a box office element and year greater than 2000 and uh, actor name is uh, 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 the, the, the the particular actor is uh, uh, is reg uh, is uh, entered as a star in this in this show so so star name and so on so uh, so essentially you you let this one and uh, uh, for each actor this this for let and uh, the, the where is implicit here and uh, 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 return uh, uh, <coughs> is uh, uh, is also specified so 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 this one uh, iteratively performs for, for each actor uh, at, at any level in the uh, specified in the uh, imdb document and then uh, it returns a set of these uh, receipts elements which uh, 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 which says actor and total th that uh, the actor has grossed and uh, 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 here are some www links or, or world wide web links where you can uh, 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 where you can get uh, more information about uh, 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 dom parsers or sax parsers or xpath queries or uh, and x query uh, standards and so on but uh, before this uh, let us go back to uh, the <coughs> uh, let us go back to the uh, 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 the, the parser uh, problem that, that we had talked about uh, that is how does a parser affect the query uh, queries that, that you give on an XML document. Uh, both uh, DOM and SAX parsers for example uh, create <coughs> uh, create uh, documents or create objects uh, which the application can access uh, that is which the application can send messages to and uh, access. However, the DOM parser requires the entire XML document to be present uh, whereas the SAX parser uh, uh, calls back into the application as and when uh, XML uh, 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 elements pass through uh, uh, the, the parser. Okay. Now uh, what kind of implication does it have on queries? Uh, let us take the query here. Uh, let us say for each actor return box office receipts of films uh, in which they starred in the past 2 years. Uh, this is uh, when you give uh, this such a query to a, a, a XML document that is passed using DOM. Uh, uh, you essentially know that the entire XML document has been navigated and parsed and, and that is present in the object that is uh, available here. So you can essentially 
uh, go and uh, look through the object and return uh, uh, return the query results. On the other hand, uh, if it is a SACS parser uh, and uh, it is a streaming XML uh, uh, data, then uh, you would not be sure whether you have encountered uh, uh, all possible actors in this loop that is uh, take a look at this for actor in uh, IMDB slash actors. So, so you will you, have no idea whether all actors have been uh, uh, have been processed as part of this uh, um, uh, uh, as part of this XML document. So, in in such a sense, uh, in, in such cases, uh, this query has to be in the form of what is called as a standing query. That is, uh, in the traditional database setting, uh, the the database is static and the query uh, passes through the database and then returns query results. But here, uh, it's the other way around. The the query is standing. The the, the query is static. And the database or the data set passes through the query and the query returns back uh, uh, or call uh, returns events or, or performs callbacks uh, into the applications whenever uh, uh, a data set matching the query is available. So, so as and when the qu query finds uh, an actor uh, and a show uh, 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 um, satisfying this criterion, it returns a received kind of XML fragment by calling back into the application. So, let us summarize what we learnt uh, today in this uh, session. We started with XML namespaces and, and how to resolve naming conflicts by, uh, uh, by assigning a uh, unique uh, uh, globally unique URI for each uh, 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 name prefix in an XML document. And we also looked at uh, some uh, C data handling uh, issues where uh, uh, especially if your document, uh, if your C data contains uh, uh, angular braces and uh, ampersand symbols and so on, you can embed it within a C data section. Next we looked at uh, two different kinds of XML uh, 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 parsing, uh, namely the uh, 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 navigational uh, parsing for of the entire document versus stream parsing. And then we looked at XPath and XQueries as, as query languages uh, or query paradigms over, uh, 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 over uh, XML data sets and how uh, these kinds of uh, uh, passing techniques can impact uh, the, the kinds of queries that uh, are how the query behaves in each of these uh, uh, passing techniques. So that brings us to the end of this session. <laughs>